Hello, this is uh, Rob Wilby. It's been a while since I've uh, done one of these talks, and this time I'm giving it a subject offense. We've all done it, we've all taken offense at something somebody said. You know, it's hurt us, and sometimes it hasn't actually, it just doesn't sound right. And I want to look at this. Say you've got a friend who, let's put it this way, is living their life in a way you don't understand. You're not even being nasty. You're just curious. And here's the thing. There are two things you must remember when you are asking about things like this. One begins with K and it is kindness. And one begins with C and it is curiosity. These two things you have to remember. Now somebody might say, oh, you're pumping them for information. That's bad. Is it? Is that something to get offended over? Maybe. Maybe not. The thing to do, I think, is measuring intention. If you measure intention, Sorry about that, that was my phone. If you measure intention rather than the word said, you get a better picture. If somebody says to you something that uses language that's a bit icky, a bit wrong, and yet you know full well where they're coming from, it's just curiosity. Where they're coming from is trying to know more. You've almost got to say to yourself, forget the words. I mean, you can tell them off a little bit later, but forget the words at that moment in time. Don't take offence and deal with the question. Deal with what they're saying. I mean, somebody might say, well, you're dealing with the words, you're dealing with what they're saying, but the words are a way to the intent. And I've always said, the intent comes first. You can't always, I'll admit this, see what the intent is from what they say. But you can make a good guess. And if you hedge on the side of them not being evil, maybe you'll do better. Quite often, people say things and it's never been meant to hurt it's not even a question of bad language it's just that the person on the other line end has just not liked the question and they have basically gone a, a plague on all your ha- plague on all your houses a plague on both your houses whatever they quoted I keep forgetting um (coughs) excuse me i've got a cough (coughs) that's better right uh a plague on all your houses uh and that's a tricky one because you don't know what you said wrong it may be that you actually asked the question which is sad people should be able to ask questions it's how we learn It's a big part of how we learn. The one thing I can think of is that sometimes we're a bit easy to take offense at things. You know, sometimes there's a trigger word, a trigger phrase, and we can't take that trigger word, and we can't take that trigger phrase. I'll draw an analogy. 
I hate. Oh, come on. I need a trigger. Anything with coconut in it, apart from one or two rather spicy things, I just can't take. I hate that stuff. When it comes to words, I'm fairly easy. There are very few words or phrases or statements that get my back up. Mm. There's a few I think that are wrong, but I wouldn't sort of go, like I said earlier, a plague on all your houses. Yeah. Why, why would I do that? That's cutting off communication. For the sake of pride, maybe? But to them, certain words are like what coconut is to me. I can't stand the taste. I'm sorry. I could just take it in certain spicy things, and that's it. And again, that's strange. That's odd. The old saying, sticks and stones, but words can... May break, oh, sorry, I got that wrong. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. That's gone by the wayside. Somebody still might say, oh, words are weapons. Mm, yes. And they can cause harm. Yes. If you let them. If you choose to do what I said earlier. Measure intent rather than the words said. We might get somewhere. I don't believe people are inherently bad. May have views that are not helpful. They may have views that hurt people. But they're not inherently evil people. I could even say, how could they be evil people? Um, they're just like you or I. Obviously, there are people who are a bit... I'm going to use a term that's going to get me into trouble here. Hopefully it shouldn't. Because I, hopefully I'm talking to the right people here. But there are people who are a bit doolally. Who think my view or the highway. Or they think I am right and I will spread my rightness all over the world. Uh, there's not many of you, mate. Or madam. There ain't any of you. All of us here who, who are sensible, middle of the road, decent people. Maybe I'm a slightly on the in the left sphere, but not much of are possessed with good intentions. We might not express ourselves that well. We may say wrong words. We may use wrong terms. We might even have the wrong idea. But if we are not actively trying to be evil, Maybe people should cut us a bit of slack. Maybe we're just trying to find out what it is about a person's situation, or how a person wants to do things, or how a person wants to be perceived. I mean, unless you're a tad unhinged, Nobody sets out to be the bad guy. Nobody would. Nobody could. And, you know, it, it's often pain to me when I hear of somebody who's 
said something or set up a situation, it's it ain't right. But was that evil intended? How fire no. Evil was not intended. I'm concerned about sarcasm is sarcasm. The most effective sarcasm is when the person being sarped at actually laughs a lot. It makes them think. It makes you your your sarcasm has hit home, but it's not evil. It made them laugh too. And that is its power. But we've got into a situation where people can't laugh at it anymore. They can't go that sharp thing somebody else has said is also darn funny. And because it's darn funny, I will take notice of it more. I will take notice of it better. And that seems to be taken away from us. Obviously, there's still a vast majority of people who you can do that with. I mean, banter is a beautiful thing. Done properly. Sometimes it hurts. But done properly, banter is a beautiful thing. It makes people laugh. And it makes people think. It may lead to a change in somebody's life. It might not. Who's to say? I'm not going to start blaming people. I'm not going to say, oh, so 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 type of people take offense of this and they are wrong. They might not be. For them, they might not be. But it does sort of put up the question, what are permissible questions? What are the things we are meant to say? Sometimes it's the actual pussyfooting around trying not to offend that's offensive. Somebody might say, oh, it's only the right wing, you know, so 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 and so who are offended by that. No, 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 no. Everybody, sorry, I had to adjust myself there. Everybody can be offended by that. Yeah, it's a bit mealy mouthed. It's it's not good. You know, they're trying not to offend. And if they offend by trying not to offend, I mean, they're stuffed. Do you want to be responsible for stuffing somebody else's discourse? <coughs> Sorry, I really have a bad cough. <coughs> Just to say, responsible for stuffing on somebody else's discourse, like I said. I mean, not to be. I mean, obviously, there's times when we this fighting words. Now, I'm a, I freely admit I'm a bit of coward. Yes. I can let other people's fighting words pass. But that's because I know other people, hopefully, will take up the cudgels and isolate those fighting words. Or, perhaps, talking back again about words and intent, maybe, again, isolate the words, but get to the intent, which may not be that evil, even though it's fighting words. 
somebody might say free speech is all speech but you run into the problem of fighting words the things that raise hackles now the i would say fighting words have to be the worst things you can say just not things not things that can be taken out of context not things that a bit sly and wry but are not evilly based that's that's discourse crusades that's a lot of discourse a lot of people luckily have open minds there's a saying uh, i ascribe it to myself but being on the left side of the argument i don't overdo it because i sound i sound like almost like a a weird proto-Nazi when I say it. I am open-minded, but not so open-minded that my brains fall out. Now, I mean that from a slight left point of view. I mean, I mean, I, I am in no way uh, car carrying, banner waving, lefty, 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 lefty. I'm just a standard Labour voter, most of the time, not always. Uh, that's what I am. <laughs> uh, just so I'll nail my claws to the mast on that one. <coughs> and when you talk politics, again, the, the question of fence groups. Somebody might say something about somebody. That's partly true, but that person didn't need to hear. Not at that moment in time. Sometimes it's the fault of people getting back to them, which is unfortunate. But going back to a fence, if somebody deliberately says the wrong thing, what are they trying to do? Are they trying to get the rise out of you? Are they trying to brow about beat you into submission so you they can't you can't get the right you can't react to them? It's difficult to think about. You your intentions are not your intentions are not always the same as what comes out. You can say the nicest things in the world, but it contains a trigger phrase, a dog whistle, uh, just the wrong word. And you're stuffed? Screwed, mucked up for what? I'm not saying you should say these things, you shouldn't. Jeez Louise, you shouldn't. But to be cast into the outer darkness because it's cast wrongly, what you have said is cruel, very very cruel and wrong we should realize where to draw the line if it sounds like evil it is if it sounds like stupidity or naivety or not being willing to understand, but not being hateful about it. We have to almost cut them a bit of slack. Not much, but 
a bit. <coughs> I'm turning red, yeah. Yeah, just a minute. I need another big cough. <coughs> Better. Right. Most of the time people say things to me and I could take offence. I'm a I am an overweight man, yeah. Fat lights and all that. I'm not no, I was gonna say I take that as a badge of honour, but that suggests that it'll have some sort of self feed which I am, but I'm not. I would like to lose weight, thank you. It's just my brain won't let me. Uh and yet, unless it was meant with force that was gripping with evil and they wouldn't let me go, then I have no choice but to either laugh at it or take it on board, or both. But of course it is absolutely dripping with evil and dripping with force then it's offensive then it's bad then it's the wrong thing these are difficult subjects these are difficult words and these are difficult times I have probably said enough things in this to potentially get me done over two or three times. I hope anybody listening to this wouldn't, because they understand I am not intending to cause offence. I am tending, intending to have a discussion on offence and have a discussion on discourse that is basically neutral. In conclusion, I would just like to say people are people. Like the song says. And why is it we should get along so awfully? Obviously that's, you know, in there too. And the best way around that is to remember the K and the C. The kindness and the curiosity. And another point is to also realize that we should measure intent not the words said the words said are just a conveyance for the intent it can't always be seen sometimes you just don't know but would like to think you here, looking at this, would be able, as intelligent beings, to read the intent and to be sensible, good people about what offence is and what a permissible question is. All I'll say now is thank you for letting me speak. I'm Robert Willoughby. This is the Bob Willoughby Experience. And I wish you a happy rest of the day and a happy rest of your life. Goodbye.